Okay guys, so the subject of conversation this evening is going to be handle finishes and the different types of finishes that I use depending on the different material varieties that I use on my handles. We've got spalted woods and stabilized woods right here. Then we've got our hardwood selections like ironwood and Honduran rosewood. And then I've got my engineered materials like G10 and my car. On this group here, I like to use a penetrating teak oil and then finish with the tongue oil. Uh, I learned a couple tricks through the uh, musical instrument world right here on how to finish wood. It works really well. And then on this variety right here, the hardwoods, um, I've got super glue laid out and the Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. Don't knock it till you try it. This works extremely well to polish these hard dense woods and I've not found a side effect yet. So. This actually works and it polishes these out and makes them gorgeous and shiny and beautiful and it holds um, these guys right here. Same deal, I polish these or I sand these up to a very high grit and then I use this mag polish. And then I pretty much finish all my handles with the paste wax. And just a note, later in the video I've got a pro tip for using this paste wax that I use every single knife that I make and it works amazing. So stick around for that tip for sure. Okay, so uh, I've got the heat gun and a couple other tools laid out here. I'm gonna bring the camera around this side. I'm gonna draw a couple diagrams to further explain what I'm talking about. Let's do it. Here we are. All right, now these are different woods. This is to show you what I'm talking about by wood grain. Okay, see how this has uh, real deep pits and things like that? This is an incredibly exaggerated version of what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna show you a piece of eucalyptus. This is the same deal when you turn it in light, you can see all these tiny pits that are beneath the surface of the wood. No matter how fine of grit sandpaper you sand this to, you're always going to have these pits, these, these little pockets in the grain. Um, same deal with this koa. This is some of my favorite wood. This is the wood that I've noticed this works the absolute best on to make the figure pop out. So see, there's all these tiny little spots that, uh, that aren't flush with the surface. So what happens is if you just put oil on this, the grain kind of pops. But in order to get this grain to come completely out and look holographic and translucent, what you need is this surface to be perfectly smooth. So you have to do a buildup layer of your oils to fill these pores. It's called a pore fill. So there's several different ways you could do this. So I'm gonna show you kind of a look at, uh, actually I'm gonna get a different angle here to show you. I'm gonna draw a picture of what's actually happening when you do a pour fill. So you've got your wood grain right here. Okay, so this is your block of wood. And this is incredibly exaggerated. But say these are the wood pours. Wood pour, right there, okay. So you take your tongue oil, you put it on a rag, and you wipe the oil on, and it does this, okay? So you have your first coat right there, number one. Then you lay another coat on, and it comes across. That's gonna be your second coat. Then you lay a third coat on. And each subsequent coat slightly starts to fill that pour. Three, then you lay another coat on, four. Okay, and so on and so on. And what you wanna do is you wanna keep adding coats until your top coat's like that. Now, when you get a top coat like that, it's gonna be like our knife. And it's gonna be real nasty and it's gonna be all chunky because you've just added tons of oil to get that finish. And that's not what we're going for. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock this back. We're gonna take a, a sandpaper and a block. You can't just sand with, uh, with your hand because what'll happen is you'll sand the oil, the oil buildup out of those pores because it's softer than the wood. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna wrap sandpaper around a block and we wanna use something hard backed in sand. And then when we sand, we're gonna sand back until just until we hit the surface of the wood. And what we'll be left with is a pour fill. So all that will be left is the oil buildup that comes right across the top of the pores. Okay, so then 
After we've sanded off all this excess oil, then all we have left is the oil that settled in the pores, and this will be perfectly flat. So effectively, right now, this has no oil on it here, no oil on it here, and no oil on it here, but this is filled with oil. Once we get to this point, so this probably takes between, depending on how deep your pores are, this could take two coats or it could take 10 coats of tongue oil. You let it dry for 24 to 48 hours until the tongue oil is fully set up and then you block it off so that you've left the tongue oil in the pores. Now we can go back with our finished coats. After we've blocked it off, we've got the whole thing smoothed out, then we can go back and start applying our very thin finish coats. So instead of getting this really thick buildup that looks chunky on it, our finish coats will be very thin. Our finish coats will finish out right about here. But what will happen is the finish coats will lay out perfectly smooth and this will look like glass. And what's cool about that is it really allows the figure of the wood just to pop and jump out and, and you'll be able to see it. So hopefully this diagram helps out with the pour fill method. That's what we're doing with the tongue oil. You could do it um, other ways. In the musical world, building guitars, a lot of people like to take a two-part epoxy, mix it together, and they take a credit card and scrape it across the face of a guitar to fill the pores. That's one way to do a pour fill really fast. It doesn't really work that whoopee on knives because it's not a flat surface, so you can't really get the excess epoxy off this oil method works great. And the best part about a tongue oil finish, if you screw up somehow or another, acetone dissolves it immediately and takes it right off and you can start over. So never be intimidated to use any type of oil finishes. They're natural and they come off really easily. That's it, that's how to do a pour fill. That's the one that I'm doing in the video right now uh, the, on the project knife that we're building together. And hopefully that explains it and you'll kind of understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it now. So right. <laughs>